Lady Macbeth is just an absolutely amazing character. I think she, you know, not enough can be said about how powerful and how uh, magnetic and energetic a character. I really am very sad uh, the way her character ends it. Um, I think so much more could be made of her. I don't know. I just think she's so electric. He's uh, Shakespeare's really been able to jump on something here. Um, when we first meet her, she's reading a letter from Macbeth kind of explaining the witches and explaining what's happened. And she reads out loud and then she starts to reflect on her thoughts. Um, you are Glamis and Cawdor and you will be what you are promised. You'll promise something. But the thing is, okay, so I'm just going to break this because the yet, yet is a good place to switch. But the thing is, I fear your nature. It's too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. So milk, I think, has associations with childhood and innocence, which, again, I find it really hard to imagine but he has he's soft he's um not ready to murder in other words he's ready to kill he's a soldier but that's different than murdering um you'd be great i mean she's just she's really giving feedback here you would be great and you do have you're not without, which is an interesting double negative. You have some ambition, but without the illness that should intend it, attend it. That is amazing. Ambition is an illness. It's it's something you're something is wrong with you that you want so much, and when you want so much, you don't stop. And um, that's really good that she kind of catches that. What wouldst thou, what thou wouldst highly, you want to do it holily. You want to do high, holy, i.e. play by the rules. Play by rules is what you want to do. You can't lie, but you would, wouldst wrongly win, wrongly win. I mean, I guess you have to lie. In order to win, I guess you'd wrongly. So by the way you do it is wrong. I think that's what she's saying. The way you do it is wrong. The way you do it is wrong. The way I do it is right. Thou'dst have great glamets. That which cries thus thou must do if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do than wishest should be undone. Whoa. Okay. You got to do stuff. You, if, if you want it, must do to have. And even if you're afraid, even if you're afraid, you got to do things that can't be. And this fear, you can't undone. You can't go back. You can't go back on it. So come on, let's do this. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pour my words spirit here. Words, poison, who knows, in your ear. And chastise with the valor of my tongue. And I, I'm, gonna, I'm going to tell off and nag and brutalize anything that impedes from the golden round great image of the crown, okay? That's her aim. She's just gonna go right there. Um, I think I would just break this here. Which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. So already you have it, already you have it. I'm just gonna get, I'm just gonna get it for you. Um, a messenger comes in and says, okay, Duncan's coming tonight uh this changes everything duncan coming tonight because if duncan coming it accelerates the plan uh and here we get this vision of lady macbeth herself as kind of witch-like and i don't know uh the raven 
himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Okay, so symbolic announcement. He, he's coming. He's coming. And so she calls out, Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, mortal life and death. And she asks really brutally to unsex me. Unsex me is amazing. So uh, how do you ungender? How do you become another? Does she shed her femininity? Can you do that? You see how advanced Shakespeare is really... These are issues that are quite alive to us now. It really jumps out, just like the witches. What are you? Are you alive? Are you dead? Are you women? But you have beards? I just don't know. The play is already in it. What is? What does it mean to be unsexed? Fill me. Fill me. My whole body with cruelty. Thicken my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse. Like, seal me up. Seal me up so you can't get to remorse. That's actually a very interesting one. That no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose nor keep peace between the effect of it. I'm going to do it. Nothing's going to stop me. Okay. But, but, she's calling for help. So for me, ever so slightly, there's a sense that she might be insecure. Come to my woman's breasts. Again, this idea of being unsexed, but she is a woman. Um, these, 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 these spirits that she's talking to, she says, come and drink from my breast milk, like poison, poison milk. You murdering ministers. Wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come. Thick night. Thick. I saw it somewhere else. Thick. Hide. Hide me. <clears throat> Paul thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. Conceal me in all this smoke. That my keen knife. My knife. The knife cover heaven so heaven doesn't see. The knife doesn't see the wound. Weird, weird imagery. And nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold, no. I don't want heaven to see. Again, we, even though it's quite powerful, there's, there's anxiety here. Um, fear of herself, her body. It's very powerful, but also I think you can already see a little bit of her anxiety there. Um, she wants to be hidden. She doesn't want to be seen. She's asking for help. Um, she is such a powerful character, but remember her mind becomes undone in this project. Um, she commits suicide. She's... She is, um, she, uh, is sleepwalking. The, the disasters of these murderers consume her and erode her. Uh, and where she ends in the play is so different to where she is now. But could we, in her language and in her dramatic presentation, already sense a little bit of that? Um, it's worth thinking about.